I'm gonna show you how to turn all these little rings into chain mail. You know you want this skill. Stay tuned. What up fam? Welcome to Skill Tree where we learn how to do just about everything. Today I'm covering a skill requested by two of the skill monkeys. <laughs> Elizabeth Gilchrist wrote, I think you should try making a chainmail coif. I would love to see how to do it. And fellow YouTuber Borg3D said, I'd love to see you learn to make chainmail to go along with your leather bracer video. Thank you, I love it when you guys leave skill requests down there at the bottom. Also, share the love, make sure you check out Borg3D's content. I love me some Kingdom Hearts, and he made a Kingdom Keyblade that is just... Fam, you know I am all about covering your requests, so without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Step 1. Making the rings. So in case you didn't know, chainmail is made out of all these tiny little rings that are linked together to form whichever garment you're trying to make. In this case, we're going to be making like a half coif, which just goes over your head and drapes down your shoulders. To make these rings, I constructed this simple little jig out of some scrap wood. I also drilled some small holes into this 3 8 round stock. I've seen people use wooden dowels for this as well, whatever's easiest for you to drill through. Hot tip though, the thicker the rod you use, the larger the rings are going to be. <laughs> the thicker the rod. Larger rings are easy to work with and you have to use less of them, but they leave larger gaps. The round stock mounts into the jig like so. Finally, connect the drill to one of the ends of your dowel. This setup is what we're going to use to turn our steel wire into rings. I opted to use 14 gauge steel electric fence wire. This stuff can be found at hardware and like farm supply stores and it's actually really cheap. I got this whole spool for like $35. It's a quarter mile, yo. They actually have similar spools in aluminum which is lighter and like super easy to work with but it's not as strong. Ultimately, your choice in which way you want to go. I mounted the spool on another bar so it can spin freely. Now, feed the wire through the hole you drilled in the dowel and lock it in place with a bend. Fire up the drill and guide the wire with your free hand. I found this bit strangely mesmerizing to watch. Just don't hold on to that wire too tightly or it'll pull you in and pinch your fingers. Never again. Once done, clip the ends of your coil free and slide it out of the jig. At this point, you've basically made springs. I actually find that really cool. Like, I made that. That's a spring. Doesn't, doesn't take much. Now using wire snips, simply cut the rings free from the coil. This is by far the most energy consuming part of the build. It doesn't take long, but it is a major hand and forearm workout. Step 2. Connecting the rings. Now that you've made piles of rings, it's time to start connecting them all together. To do this, you simply use two pairs of pliers to pry them open. Once you have them where you want them, close the rings like so. Another hot tip, for most of this tutorial you're going to see I used these, they're like linesman pliers. You're really better off using small pliers that spring themselves open. So after hours, this motion of trying to open it with your hand, then close it again, see how I have to kind of swivel my hand to make that work, that kills your wrist. These little guys, you never have to move position. They close, you do what you gotta do, you open again. Like night and day. It's a right tool for the job kind of thing. Step three, constructing the crown. To start the coif, we need to make six of these triangle shapes. These taper off and will form the crown piece, not unlike how a baseball cap is put together. Just so I remain clear, whenever I have rings that are being connected together by another ring, I'm gonna call that other ring the connector ring. This way I'm not just saying you take the ring and you connect it to the other ring with a ring. I just feel like that'll be real confusing real fast. Start by closing nine rings. Connect two rings together with a connector ring. Now add a third to the mix and connect it to the second ring from the original set with another connector ring. Notice how the new connector rings pass in front of the old ones. You're going to want to maintain this pattern as you go through and connect the rest of the rings. Continue with the next row down, moving in the opposite direction. So notice the little eyes that form when two rings overlap. Just weave your connector rings through them and you can't go wrong. Now continue down the line until you complete a 9x9 triangle. Knock out five more of these bad boys and we are ready for the next step. Step four, putting it all together. Okay, now that we have all the pieces of the crown ready to go, it's time to stitch them all together. Start by taking two aside and connecting the second two rings from the top together. Notice how this completes the pattern at the point of the triangles. Now connect the next two rings down the line as well as the ring that you just put in. 
At this point, I noticed everything was getting really lost, so I started to color the rings red so you can follow along a little easier. Here, the connections are made, including the last ring added and the two below it. Again, notice how each new ring completes the pattern in its row. One ring in front of the next. Continue down the line the same way until the two are completely joined. Then do the same with the rest of the triangles until the crown is all together. I tried to keep that as clear as possible. I know it kind of gets muddy when you're looking at it on camera. Just go back as many times as you need to, pause it and really look at how it's all stitched together. So I found this to be the most confusing part when I first started it. Um, after like four or five rings though, it got to be super easy. So stick with it, you got this. To finish this step, we need to close up the middle of the crown. Just continue with the pattern until the hole disappears. Depending on your ring size, should only take like one more row. And there you have it, completed crown. Now shake your hands out, cause it's time to move on to step five, expanding. Great job so far, that was the hard bit. Now find a comfortable spot and a really good playlist. This next bit takes a while. So we want this thing to cover our entire head and that means more rings, lots more rings. Continue using the established pattern, moving around the crown to grow the piece. Also make sure you're checking the fit as you go. So the odds are you're gonna need to add rings and grow it a little bit as you go to fit the contours of your head. Either that or I just have a huge melon. To make the piece wider, add a ring so that it connects to only a single ring above it. This adds another place for an additional ring in the next row down. Do this as many times as you need to to fit your brain cage. So like when I got to about here, I added like three extra rings which made three extra spaces below it, and then a couple extra ones below that one, and it just kind of naturally grew to get around my giant ears. Anyway, just keep adding rings until the cap reaches just above your eyebrows. Now mark where you want the openings for your face to be and add rings so you don't lose the spots. Now you only need to weave rings up to those spots to leave room for your face. Now as you move down, add a ring to the ends of every other row that only connect to a single ring above it. Then tie it in as normal in the next row. This will keep your line nice and straight. If you don't do that, every row will have one less ring in it and you'll end up tapering it off to make another one of those little triangles like you made in the beginning. But you know, bigger. And that's it. Just keep adding rings until it reaches your desired length. At this point, you can connect them together at the bottom to make a full coif, bring it down past your shoulders, make a male onesie, really whatever floats your boat. Although, stay away from boats and water in general you will sink like a stone. Honestly, the most taxing part of this project was cutting all the rings. When you think you have enough, you're wrong. Cut double that and then triple that number. If you can, like grab a friend to open the rings as you cut them. That'll save you a step when you're connecting them all together. It's depressing because that jerk's the only guy I could find to help me. I've made myself sad. What makes me happy is when you remember to hit that thumbs up if you like what you saw and also hit that subscribe button and join the skill monkeys. Finally, make sure you hit me up in the comments with any new skills you want to learn and I will add it to the list. Well, I better go. Neighbor's house is not going to storm itself. Hope he's not a baby and call the cops again. In the meantime, keep leveling up, you.